we have seen where the Lord has called on Joshua to now take on the role of leading the children of Israel. Joshua, he accepted that role to where he's going to now lead the children of Israel across the Jordan into the promised land to take possession of their blessing. We have seen in our Sunday school lesson just as recent as last week, where Joshua sent two spies over into the land to where they spied in Jericho and they returned back with a report that was of faith. The spies, they believed that they could not only take Jericho, but that they could take the land as well. So now the time has come, as we'll see here in our Sunday school lesson this week, where the children of Israel, they are to cross over the Jordan, which they did, and now Jericho is before them. It is now time for them to begin taking possession of their blessing. Our lesson this week it opens there in the second verse with the Lord saying to Joshua see I have given Jericho into your hand its king and the mighty men of valor now if you remember our first lesson of this quarter you will recall that the Lord said and he promised to Joshua that nobody could hinder him and the children of Israel from taking possession of the promised land from taking possession of what belonged to them their blessing and so this report of faith from the spies, it was confirmation that they believed that the children of Israel were capable of taking the land. Now, I'm not saying that Joshua needed this confirmation because he, along with Caleb, had believed 40 years prior that the children of Israel would be able to take possession of the land. That's what they said to Moses, the 10 spies, the 10 other spies, they disagreed with Joshua and Caleb, but Joshua and Caleb, they had that faith. So this report from the two spies wasn't necessarily confirmation for Joshua. It was more so confirmation for the people to inspire them, to encourage them that they could take possession of the land. Now, here in our next couple of verses, we'll see that in order for Joshua and the children of Israel to take Jericho, there were instructions from the Lord that they needed to follow. Joshua and the men of war, they were to march around the city one time for six days with seven priests going before the ark bearing seven trumpets, we we're told there. On the seventh day, the instructions were slightly different with them marching around the city, we'll see there seven times rather than just the one time. Again, Jericho would be theirs to take if they were obedient, if they followed God's instruction. Now, do you understand that this same thing holds true for all believers today? Not saying that we can have Jericho, but again, let us understand that Jericho was part of the blessing that the Lord had promised to the children of Israel. So for us today, we can have our Jericho. We can have our blessing from the Lord if we are obedient to the instructions that God gives to us in being able to take possession of our blessing. We must be obedient. We must have faith when it comes to receiving taking possession of our blessing. Now here in the next couple of verses, we're going to see here that Joshua, the seven priests and the men of war all woke up early in the morning to do as God had instructed them to do. We'll see there in the 12th and 13th verse that the seven priests, they took up the ark, that they carried the ram's horns before the ark and that they continually blew their horns. The armed men and the rear guard, we'll see there as well. They did their jobs as well. Again, from these two verses, we'll see that they were all being obedient to God's instructions. So for those that were in Jericho, you have to imagine that they must have been trembling in fear. They were already afraid of Israel when they were across the Jordan. Now Israel was there at the front door, right? They are parading around Jericho. And again, they are making these noises. They are essentially sieging the city. So those who were hiding behind the walls of Jericho, you have to imagine again that they were terribly afraid. I imagine that the only one who wasn't afraid was probably Rahab and those who were of her house. 
I imagine that she may have been somewhere smiling because she knew what was about to happen, but she also believed that she would be spared because of the agreement that she came to with the spies. Again, let us remember from our lesson last week, Rahab was one who was of faith. So I imagine that Rahab was somewhere smiling about all that was now taking place as she knew victory was about to come to Israel and that she was about to join them. She was about to be spared as well. So again, we'll see there in the 14th and in the 15th verse that Israel, they were following God's instructions for the six days. And then the seventh day, we'll see that it arrived. And on the seventh day, we'll see that again, Israel was still being obedient to God's instructions. After the priests blew into their horns on the seventh day, we'll see that Joshua said to the people there in the 16th verse, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. So Joshua, he said this with all confidence, right? Now, why was he so confident that, again, this belonged to them? Well, his confidence came from the fact that he knew that he and the children of Israel, they had been obedient to God's instructions. And as I said earlier, you and I today, we should understand that when we are obedient to God's word, when we are obedient to his instructions, then success belongs to us, the blessing we will receive because of our obedience. So that's something that we should take away from this, okay? We can move with confidence. When we are obedient to the Lord's word, we are going to receive our blessing. We don't have to be so hesitant. We don't have to be so worried. We should be confident because again, faith, we should understand faith, being obedient to God's instructions, trusting in the Lord, it leads to great success. It leads to you taking possession of what God has given to you. Joshua, again, there in the 17th verse, we'll see that he was full of confidence. He spoke to the city being doomed by the Lord to destruction. Then let us understand that nothing and nobody can stand in the way. Nothing and nobody can hinder us. No obstacles can block us from taking possession of our blessing when we are obedient to the Lord. Again, we shouldn't worry. So many of us, we think that God is leading us to failure. Why would God lead us to failure? When his hope for us is for us to have peace, a future and a hope, God wants you to receive the blessing that he has for you. So again, obedience, understand today, obedience leads to success. This is why Joshua again was so confident because he knew that he and the children of Israel, that they had been obedient to God's instructions. This is again why Joshua knew that they would be able to take possession of what God had promised to them. Now let us also notice here in the 17th verse, the mention of Rahab here. We cannot overlook this. She was to be spared along with all of those in her house because she hid the messengers and the spies, let us remember from the lesson last week, they promised this. So again, we see confirmation of Rahab here being spared by the children of Israel. Rahab in her house, her family, let us remember her father, her mother, her siblings, they were not destroyed, they were spared. Here in the 18th and in the 19th verse, we'll see more instructions from the Lord. We'll see that Joshua, he instructs the children of Israel to abstain from the accursed things so that they didn't become accursed themselves and also make the rest of the camp of Israel accursed. This speaks to the thought about how you, the child of God, how we, the children of the Lord, we have to be very careful about the company that we keep. We have to be very careful about the things that we allow within our vicinity. As Paul said, Paul said that wickedness, bad company can corrupt good habits. And, and we as his children, we as God's children, we must keep good habits. We don't want anything to persuade us away from following the Lord. And so this is what held true for Israel as well. They weren't supposed to take any idols. They weren't supposed to take anything that was corrupt with them. Because again, those things could have inspired them to go away from the Lord in faith and serving idols. So they were supposed to be very careful about not taking anything corrupt with them. And again, we should understand today that 
we have to be very careful as believers about the company that we keep. You don't want anything around you that can persuade you to move away from the Lord because we as God's children, we ought to desire to be near to him at all times. Now, the silver and gold and the vessels of bronze and iron, they were to be taken. And the reason why they were to be taken was because they would be consecrated. In other words, they would be made to use in service of the Lord. Now, let us notice that these instructions were for after the children of Israel took Jericho. And so along those lines, I want you to understand today that these instructions were for after they took possession of their blessing. So for all of us as God's children, we have to understand today that God not only has instructions for us when it comes to taking possession of our blessing, but the Lord has instructions for us when it comes to using what he has blessed us with. We, we ought to desire to use the blessing that God has blessed us with. We ought to desire to use it properly. If we don't use it properly, we may lose it. So again, you and I as God's children, we must understand that we have instructions for taking possession of our blessing and for how to use what God has given to us. When we follow God's instructions again, we are able to use God's blessings to its full potential, which again would be of service of not just ourselves, but for all of those that are around us as well. In the last verse of our lesson here, we'll see that the children of Israel, they shouted when the priest blew the trumpets. And we we're told there that the walls of Jericho fell down and they took the city. Now, we would say that the taking of Jericho was rather easy, wouldn't we? But again, let us notice, let us pay very close attention here today that the taking of Jericho required obedience. It required for Joshua and the children of Israel to be obedient to God's instructions. It, yeah, it may have seemed easy, but it also required for Joshua and the children of Israel to put forth an effort. Notice that they had to circle around the city. They couldn't sit down. And so something that I said in the sermon recently is that our faith requires action. Sometimes a lot of us think that we can just sit down and our blessing will be right there for us. But I think that many of us, we fail to realize that our sitting down is what actually blocks us from receiving the blessing that God has for us. We have to be obedient. But there are a lot of times where we have to actually move to take possession of our blessing. Guess what happens if you don't move? If you don't move, that blessing isn't going to just come to you. So we are, we think that the devil blocks us from our blessings, but we are our biggest enemies to where we hinder ourselves from taking possession of what God has for us. So if there's anything that we take away from our lesson this week, and then again from the past couple of lessons that we've had, is that our faith requires action. Again, our faith it not only requires actions, but our faith requires us to be obedient to God's instructions, his word. It also requires us to trust in the Lord. When we do these things, when we are obedient to God's word, when we trust in the Lord, when we actually put forth our faith, our faith actually turns into actions, we are going to be successful and we will be blessed. We will take possession of what God has for us. Mm -hmm.